Rennie's, Abner. I believe that's our ring. I know his lama. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lama and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, at last, Lum is a free man. The courts could find no basis for a trial against him and dropped the case. So once again, the old partners are reunited and are happily running the Jotham Down store together. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in the store. Lum is hard at work on the financial records. Cedric has just entered. Listen. Well, howdy, Cedric. Howdy, Mr. Abner. Come on in. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Lum. Hello, Mr. Lum. Ain't no use talking to Lum, Cedric. He's concentrating on the bookkeeping. <laughs> Been at it all morning long. Just tickles him to death to be working on them books again. It does, huh? Well, it must. The amount of time he spends on them. I done all the book work while I was running the store here alone and never take me more than five or ten minutes and just appears to take him hours to do it. Hey, Abner, here's another entry I can't figure out. Yeah, what is it, Lum? Oh, his old Lum's been away from them books so long he sort of forgot how to do them. <laughs> you got Grandpappy Spears charged with seven or something on one day and two or something the next day and three the next day. But it don't say what that something is. Well, I don't know. Must be a mistake. I don't recollect selling Grandpap nothing. Or, wait a minute, what, what day was that, that seven's down there for? Oh, uh, on a Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, that last Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, I recollect now. <laughs> oh, them's just a record of checker games that Grandpap win from me. For goodness sakes. Putting stuff like that in the books, no wonder I can't get nothing to balance. Well, we had to have something to keep score on. They's laying there open. Fix it up somehow, Lom. <laughs> Dog is a sure relief to have Lom back in the store, Cedric. I can just sit back and let him worry about all such of that now. Mr. He's a heap better at worrying than I am. S- say, Mr. Abner, what I come in for was to ask if you had any of them big dolls left. The kind you had just before Christmas. Oh, oh. Well, yeah, yeah, I believe we do have a couple of them, Cedric. Y- you going to get one for Clarabelle? Oh, no, Mom, it's for me. You? Doggies, ain't you a little big for a doll, Cedric? Oh, no, Mom. See, I need a doll for something I'm taking up. I'm going to be a ventriloquist. A vin... A what? Vent... I can't speak that word. Oh, you mean a, a ventriloquist? Yeah. Yes, Mom, that's it. <laughs> oh, I've seen them at carnivals, yeah. I don't believe you can throw your voice, old Cedric. That's awful hard to do. Oh, I, I can do it all right. See this little round thing here? Uh-huh. See, I just put that in my mouth, and I can throw my voice any words I want to. Well, I do know. Surprise my friends. That's what he said. What, who said? The fellow that sold it to me. Just cost a dollar and a half. Well, I doggy, that sounds like a bargain. Hey, let, let's hear you do it once, Cedric. Well, well get, get me the doll first. I've got to have a doll to sit on my lap and talk to like oh, you Oh, <laughs> sure. Let's see now, where'd we put them things? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're right over here behind the counter. I know where they're at. Yeah, I'll get them. This fella would say, hello, Bobo, and, and then the doll would answer right back and say, hello, Mr. Gorky. Well? Mr. Gorky was the fella's name, you know. Uh-huh. And then they'd tell some jokes and stuff. Boy. Yeah, here we are, Cedric, yeah. How's this one? This one do? I reckon so. I'd rather have a boy doll, but I guess this one's all right. Yeah. Well, here. I just sit on your lap there and let's hear you talk with it. <laughs> boy, this is fun. Yeah, huh? I've always loved to hear them fellas do it. Put on some entertainments down the school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. Hello, Bobo. That's funny. It don't answer, does it? Well, you got to do the talking for Bobo, too, Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot, forgot to put the ventriloquist thing in my mouth. Oh, hello, me. Now, listen. Hello, Bobo. Hello, Cedric. Is that supposed to be Bobo? Yeah. Bobo sounds an awful lot like me, don't he? Yeah, sounds exactly like you, Cedric. I don't believe that thing's much good. Oh, yes, it is. It worked terrible good for that other fellow. I just need to practice, I reckon. Yeah, well, maybe when you practice later. Yeah, well, come here a minute. I need your help. Uh, I can't now, Law. Me and Cedric is practicing ventriloquisms. Ventriloquism? Yeah. Hello, Bobo. Hello, Cedric. Here, Cedric, Law. For goodness sakes. 
Forget that, Abner. Come over here and explain some of this stuff you've written in these books. Well, all right. Excuse me, Cedric. What is it you can't figure out now, Lom? Randy, I don't see how one feller could get things so mixed up in such a short time. You're a genius. A genius. I am. Hello, well, good Bobo. for me. Hello, Cedric. Hello, <laughs> Bobo. Listen to Cedric. Cedric, hash that up. Granny, this is a noisy one place. Well, wh- what is it you don't understand, Long? Well, in the first place, why did Miss Barton bring back a sack of sugar and two pounds of lard and three pounds of hominy? Bring back? Well, i never seen her do that. Must have done it when my back was turned. Was the stuff spoiled or ruined or anything? I don't know. She must have sneaked in here with it, Long. Or maybe Mousy was here when she come in. No, you must have been here because you read it down here. This is your handwriting. Let's see. Well, wait a minute. That don't say nothing about bringing stuff back. I just sold her that long. Not according to this. You got her credited with these groceries. Huh? You put it on the wrong side of the books, what you done. Wrong side? Well, what difference does that make? Well, it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, I think now I can understand this next entry where you sold Ezra Seast drunk $10 worth of cash. Ten dollars worth of cash? I never done no such a thing. According to the book, she did. Never done it? I never done it. I recollect Ezra come in here and paid me ten dollars on his account. Well, I d- that varmint must have turned right around and stole it back when I weren't looking. That snake in me. Well, wait, wait a minute. I'm going to call him you? right now. I dog as he can't get away with that. Abner, get away from that phone. No, sir, I'm going to get that varmint. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Oh, my goodness. What's the matter, Cedric? <laughs> that sound like my voice is coming from the feed room? Oh, no. Sounded like it's coming from right where you at there, Cedric. Did, huh? Yeah. Shucks, I reckon I ain't ready for a long-range voice throwing yet, then. I better just stick to Bobo. Yeah, I believe you have. Hello, Bobo. Hello, Cedric. <laughs> Hello, Bobo. Hello, Cedric. <laughs> for goodness sake, Cedric, cut that out. It's getting on my nerves. Can't you see I'm trying to do some work around here? Yes, Mom. Wait a minute, Abner, put down that phone. All right, doggies, I'm going to get this thing straightened out right now, Lom. I ain't going to let that... Hello? Give me that phone. Is Ezra... Oh, what's the matter with you? There now. Don't go call nobody else out. Well, Lom, if that Ezra C. Strunk stole $10 from us, I'm going to... He never stole gonna... $10 from us. He must have. That's what you said. It's written right there on the book. He just... You wrote it down there yourself. Huh? He brung it in here and paid you ten dollars, and you got it down in the books wrong. That's all. Oh. Now just calm yourself down and try to explain some more of these entries. Yeah, I'd have sent him to the penitentiary coming in here stealing from me. He never stole it. All right, all now, right. Now listen to this one. Speak to him about it, though, just to be sure. Thursday. Huh? I'm, I'm trying to find out what this means. Oh. It says Thursday arose early with the rosy fingered dawn. Whatever that is. Ate a light breakfast and off to work. Saw a robin on the way to the store. Robins are nice birds. Is that in there? Yeah. Then on the next page it says, Friday, early to work again. Saw my friend Mr. Robin once more. What's wrong with me? Only somehow he looked different. May have been a sparrow. Been walking my sleep here, sir. Today is payday. The store is getting to seem like a mother to me. Oh, uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe I know who put that in there. Yeah, I'm feared I do, too. Yeah, that's that mousey. He he told me he's keeping a dairy for himself. Dairy? That's what he said. Oh, yeah. diary. Huh? Well, he can't keep it in the bookkeeping books, I'll tell him that. Anyways, this ain't no way to do business. Of course not. You tell him that either he quits writing diaries all over everything else or get out here and find yourself a new job. Now, Granny, I'm getting pretty t- Wait a minute. Huh? Yonder he comes now. I'll tell him myself. Yeah, he must have got his deliver done already. I'll say one thing for him, Long. He does his work fast. I'll say that for him. Yeah, but that ain't no excuse for him ruining the ledger books. Oh, no, no. He ought to write such as that in there. He ought to get himself a tablet. That's what he ought to do. Put it all down there. I'm gone from the store just two weeks, and when I get back, everything's so mixed up, you can't tell nothing about nothing. Hello, Mousy. Come in. I want to talk to you. Well, howdy, Lon. I'd like to talk to you, too, if I can. Uh, can I get off early today? Get off early? What for? Well, I want to go home if I can. I've got a surprise for Gussie. You see, I've just become a ventriloquist. 
A ventriloquist? Yes, sir. See this little thing? I just bought it for a dollar and a half. Boy, did you get one of them too, Malsey? Look, I got one here. Well, really? H- how does it work, Cedric? Oh, pretty good. Here, here, do you want to try talking to my doll? Why, yes, I'll try it. Uh, let me get this ventriloquist device adjusted first. Now, just a minute, you Here I This go. is on per enough. Hello, Bobo. Hello, Mousy. Oh, boy, that's good. Do it again. Hello, Bobo. Hello, Mousy. <laughs> Listen to this. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. No, I wish I had me one of them things. <laughs> I wish you'd all get out of here so as I could get some work did. Huh? Of all the silly, stupid things I've ever heard of, this kept out everything. Well, I think they're sort of cute, Lum. You're all acting like a bunch of half road youngins. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, now, go on, get crazy. out of here. Go on, get out before I throw you out a lot further than you can throw your voices. Go I on, now, get it. out. All right, come on, come on, Cedric. Come on, Mousy. Say, Cedric, you think that feller's still in town? I'd love to get me one of them things. Reckon he is if we hurry. Come on, Mousy. Yes, sir. We'll be back after a while, Long. I've never seen such goings on among road men folks in my life. Hey, Cedric! Cedric, you left your ventriloquist device. Cedric! Come on. Hm. A dollar and a half for that thing. Hm. Curious looking gadget. Hello, Bobo. Hello, Lum. <laughs> Hello, Bobo. Hello, Lum. Is that I believe that's our ring. I know it's Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Down Store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum is very much relieved now that the burglary charge against him has been dismissed by the judge at the county seat. The old fellows are reunited in the store business, and as we look in on the Jotham Down store today, we find Lum just completing the job of untangling the books that Abner attempted to keep while Lum was away from the business. Listen. Oh, Granny, I'm glad to get that over with. Huh? Oh, I'm more to a frazzle. War to a friend's all. Well, I don't see what you're so wore out about. <sighs> Just been sitting down there for three days studying over them bookkeeping books. I've had to do all the work. Well, you don't know what work is till you've tried to straighten out a mess like that. Any of them books was the worst mixed up things I ever seen. It was, huh? Yeah, after this, I think you better just let me make all the entries and do the posting and that ledger stuff, Abner. Well, I wish you would, Lum. I never did see no sense to keeping them books, no way. No sense to it? No, sir. Granny, these books are just the foundation of our whole business structure, that's all. These books is what tells us where we're at. Well, I know where I'm at without looking at no book. Well, I mean, where we're at, financial. Oh, oh. Tells us exactly how much our expenses is, both the overhead and the underhead expense. Well, we ain't going to have no overhead this year long. We, we put a new roof on, you know, last year. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, we won't have no expense up there overhead. Overhead expense means salaries and what it costs us to do business and such as that. Huh? You hear that? I reckon so. I never knowed what that meant by it, though. I know that. Tells us how much we got out on the credit and how much we owe and well, all Well, we that. can tell how much we owe by just looking in that drawer full of bills over there. Facts is, I'd rather not hear about them. Well, you got to face them things, Abner. If you're going to be in business, you got to keep track of your bills and obligations. Yeah, I reckon so. It's the only way you can tell exactly what your profits and losses was for the year. Well, all you got to do to tell that, Mom, is just look in the cash drawer at the end of the year and see if you got more money or less money than you had the first of the year. That's easy. Yeah, but that ain't an official way to do it, though, Abner. Ain't, huh? Oh, big business like this, we ought to keep records to make their income tax from, such as that. Income tax. 
Yeah, that granny, that just reminds me, too. I thought I was done. We ain't made that out yet. Well, I don't know nothing about making out income tax long. Well, you couldn't learn no younger. We'll do it right now. Just write down what I tell you. Here, uh-huh. take this income tax blank. I got it over at the post office this morning. Dick Huddleston had an extra one. Oh, that's what that thing is. Doggy, that gets me mixed up just looking at it. Look at these things they want to know. <laughs> it does look complicated, but if you've got a head for figures, it ain't nothing to it. Let's see now. I've already written down our name and address there. Yeah, jot them down. Store, long letters, Abner, Peabody, props. Yeah. Yeah, just start with that top line there. It says income and stuff. Yeah, well, now, what do you want me to put down there? Yeah, just a second. Let me check with my books here. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I wish I knowed how to do such as this. Here we are. According to this, our net income for 1940 was $462.78. $400? I know this. Was it that much long? Sure. We're in the upper brackets now, <laughs> Well, good for <laughs> us. Yeah, just write that down in the column there. Right here, huh? Right after the dollar sign. $462.78. That's right it. There. Dollar sign front and a cent sign behind. What's yeah. that next there now? Huh? Oh, uh, dividends, interest on bank deposits, notes, corporation bonds. Mm. Uh, put down $100, or make it $200. $200? Well, I never knowed we had any of them corporation bonds and all that long. Well, we ain't, but I don't want them fellas in Washington to know we ain't got any. Oh, oh. Yeah, we got to make this look important. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing to do. I'll put it down 300 That's what I'll put it. $300. Oh, yeah, that looks bigger. <laughs> What's next? Uh, annuities. We got any of them? Does it say what kind of annuities? No, it just says annuities here. Well, just say that we're out of them right now, but we'll order some next time we go to the wholesale house. Out. We'll order. Put there. There any some of the questions they ask here. Well, what is annuities, Lom? Oh, they... You mean you don't know what they're... No, I, I don't believe I do. Oh, you undoubtedly know what them I things I don't honor. <laughs> I'd be ashamed to admit to it. Well, I'm Better ashamed to Better go to the next question now. Well, you ain't told me what them annuities is I yet. said go on to the next question, Abner. Granny, we ain't got time to stop and ask questions. This ain't no quiz. Well, all right. Let's see. Uh, net short-term gain from sale or exchange of capital assets. Put down yes. Yes. Net long-term gain from sale or exchange. Put down yes to all of them things there. Yes. Skip down there where it says deductions. Yes. 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 Yeah, we got yes. enough written down for income. Yes. Uh, deductions. Now, uh, what is them, Long? Well, that's things you can deduct. Stuff you can take off. You mean like your hat and coat? No, of course not. Well, you can take your hat off. Fact says you're supposed to when you go in the house. Figures, figures, Abner. I reckon the giver meant put that in there to learn everybody to be polite. No, it ain't there. got nothing to do with being polite. It just means stuff you can subtract from your income, such as, well, they're all written down there. Contributions paid, interest, taxes. Oh, yeah, I see where you're reading now. Yeah, how much was our taxes last year, Lom? Yeah, look it up. Come pretty high. I know oh, that. I know that is out of sight. Come out of sight. There yeah, are taxes on store building and equipment thirty one dollars and sixteen cents. For the land sakes, plus a four dollar and twenty two cents tax on the deliver truck. Yeah, yeah, four. That reminds me, we can take off for gasoline mileage on that truck. I think. We can, huh? It's seven cents a mile or something like that. Well, here we can do better than that, Lum. We just had that truck the last half a year. So the first half of the year, we ought to be able to take off the whole truck. I agree that's right. Why, sure. We never had it the first sure. half. No. Truck cost us about $400. Half of that's uh, just uh, $200. $200. Put around $200 there. <laughs> Good for me for thinking of that. $200. What does yeah. it say next there? Uh, losses from far, storm, shipwreck, or... Uh, I know, because we can get something out of that shipwreck there, Lom. We never had no shipwreck. Well, don't you recollect last summer, me and you went fishing down there at the mill pond and our boat turned over? Oh, there's a boat wreck. That don't count. Well, you run a pair of $3 shoes when you fell in the water. I recollect how the soles come off of them, melted away again, they got wet. Well, give them in, ain't going to buy me a new pair of shoes if that's what you're driving at. That was a boat wreck. Now, better leave that out of there, Abner. You're cheating yourself, but I'll leave it out. What's next there? Uh, shipwreck or other casualties or theft. Well, I know we ain't never stole nothing this last year. I, know I don't that. mean us doing the thieving. That means did somebody rob us? 
Oh. But I don't recollect that anybody did. Well, how about last fall when that oldest Blevins boy broke in taking two sacks of sugar? Finish, that's right. I might not have forgot uh, about that. Yes, Write sir. that down. Yes, yes. sir. Really. Two sacks of sugar taken by Milton Blevins. Yep, Milton. Or no, uh, leave his name out of it, Abner. His mama come in and apologized for him and paid us back, I think. Yes, yeah, she paid for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just put down two sacks of sugar. I won't say who taken them. Yeah. Just What's next? A bad name on the boy. Uh, bad debts. Oh, well, that's easy. Just put down Squire Skimp in big, heavy letters. <laughs> Squire M.K. Skimp. That's it. Dog put it some underlines on there. Oh, look how big I'm writing it there. Wait till all <laughs> them friends he claims he's got in Washington sees that. Yeah, that'll fix him. <laughs> you see that. Oh, just put another line under it. Skip some of that stuff and get down there to where it says dependence. Dependence, dependence. Oh, here, dependence. Now, who do we put down for that long? Well, me and you. We both depend on the store here for a living, so yeah. put us down for 400 apiece. 400 That's how much it says you can get for each well, depend. No. $800. Let's see, now how about Lizbeth and Little Pearl? They depend on me. Well, put them down. That's 800 more. <laughs> 1600 altogether. Yeah. We're and doing good. Mousy, he works for us, and Gussie, his woman, depends on Mousy. Why, sure. Well, fact is, her brother, Snake Hogan, ain't working, so he sort of depends on Mousy too long. That's right. There's $1,200 for the three of them. <laughs> Makes a total of... $1,200. 1600 1200 That's all I got there. $2,800, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, twenty eight hundred. What <laughs> good for us? <laughs> it's the best income tax we've ever had. Oh, think. this is a dandy. Yeah, go, go ahead and figure up now how much we got to pay to give her. Well, I don't know how to do that. Mom. Ain't nothing to it. That's just, figuring. I don't know. Just subtract them deductions from the income figures and take four percent of the balance. Oh well, let's see now. Let's see what else. Simply falling off a long back. That's uh, six. Bring down two and carry one. Let's see now. Oh. A lot of people get worried and upset yeah. over having to figure out their income tax. Not from not, not. Get nervous about it. Four, six. Seven. I don't know. I, I sort of enjoy it myself. Very three. <laughs> I reckon stuff like that just comes sort of natural to me. Six and three. Having nine. a good head for figures and all. Four and four is eight. Yeah, there, there it is. Got it? Right there. Yeah. I got something here, Lom. It don't sound just right, though. What is it? Well, according to me here, it's 8,912 sacks of sugar. Sugar? That's what it says. Oh, no, I have no... Wait a minute. It's supposed to be in dollars. Let's huh? see that. I done just what you told me oh, to. I only made a mistake there, No, no, I never. No, oh, I never. well, here you forgot to put in a decimal point. Huh? It brings it down to $89.12. But wait a minute. We don't know that. We don't? No, according to this, that's how much the government owes us. <laughs> Oh, us. Granny, this is the best news I've heard in a long time. <laughs> for, let's send them a bill for it right now. Give them in those is eighty nine dollars and twelve cents. Send them a bill. I'll make it out. Oh no, we we oughtn't to take it, Abner. Huh? No. Won't take it. I uh, just thinking here. Government's awful busy these days, and they're carrying a terrible big burden with defense work and all that. We just write them a letter and tell them to forget about it this year. Well, Cancel I reckon it. that would be the best thing to do. Let it go for one year. Here, I'll get out some paper and we'll write them. Yeah, how much money we got in the cash drawer over there? Well, I cashed in thirty-seven dollars there this morning. When I brought the money in. That's what I put in it. What do you say we get it out and put it in an envelope and send it to the giver man too? Just give it to him. Yeah. They need it a whole lot worse than we do, have they? Yeah, I reckon so. Besides, putting money in the government's the best investment you or me or any citizen of this country could make right now. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, now, how are we going to put that down here on the books, Long? Oh, I reckon we'll just put down investment in freedom. Thirty-seven dollars. Abner, I believe that's our ring. I dog it, Lom. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John him down store. This is Lom and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, now that the old fellows have their account books all straightened out once again and their income tax report all made out, 
Life at the Jotham Down store has settled down into a peaceful, easygoing routine. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the store taking care of things while Lum is out to lunch. Cedric has just entered. Listen. Well, howdy, Cedric. Howdy, Mr. Abner. Come on in. What can I do for you today? Oh, nothing, I reckon. <laughs> Can't stay because I'm too busy following a feller. Following a feller? Uh, oh, are you doing your, doing your detective work again? No, Mom, I, I had to give that up because somebody stole my junior detective badge. Oh, well, that's too bad, Cedric. Well, uh, what was you following this feller for? Oh, so, so as I can get some buttons from him. Boy, that's what I like. Buttons? Yes, Mom, little, little buttons you can wear on your coat lapel. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to get a whole bunch of them if I can. Wear them all over me. <laughs> Mousy Gray got a couple from the feller. Yeah, well, uh, what, what are the buttons for, Cedric? Uh, what do they say on a boat for somebody or something? No, Mama. I don't know for sure what they say. Something about honesty or being honest or something, I think. Oh, well, I'd be proud to wear one of them myself, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll try to get you one, too, Mr. Abner. Why, sure. Put it right here by my Red Cross button. You ain't saw the feller go by the store here, have you? No, Cedric, I don't even know him. Well, you'd know him if you ever seen him once. <laughs> I would. He's a sort of an oldish feller, and he's carrying a lantern. A lantern? What's that for? I don't know. All I know he's got some buttons, and I... Well, there comes Mr. Lum. Maybe he's seen the feller. No, no, I don't reckon he has, Cedric. He's just been down to Luke Spears' at restaurant there eating his Hello, lunch. Hello, Mr. Lum. Yeah, howdy, Lum. How's your lunch? Oh, pretty good, I reckon. How are you, Cedric? Well, I'm all right. Say, have you seen the feller with the lantern? Oh, have you heard about him already? Yes, Mom. I want to get some buttons from him. <laughs> Boy. Yeah. Well, I think if you hurry, you can catch him down near the barber shop. He's heading that away. Oh, boy. Much obliged. I'll, I'll see if I can get you one, too, Mr. Abner. Yeah, well, goodbye, Cedric. And don't forget now. Get me one. All right. Button. You, you mean one of these? Huh? All right, doggies. Did you get that from the feller, Lum? Yeah, he stopped in at the restaurant there and was giving these away. Oh. Give us some pamphlets to read, too. Yeah, let, let's see that button there, Lum. What does it say there? Honesty brings everything. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I reckon I'm the kind Cedric is talking about, all right. Well, who who is this fella, Lum? I don't know. Some stranger in town. Yeah. He's the curiousest looking fella you ever seen. Well. Hair sort of turning white and he lets it grow pretty long. Hangs clean down over his collar. Well, more than likely can't afford a haircut. No, I don't think it's that. I believe he just likes it that way. Fact is, I think he's kind of rich. Rich? Yeah, he had lunch there at Luke's, and when he got done, he left a 25-cent tip, he called it. 25 cents? My doggies, that's as much as that deluxe merchant lunch cost down there. Mm -hmm. I bet old Luke might not think it. Oh, yeah, he's showing it around <laughs> telling everybody. Well, I do just give it to him. Well, well, I had to leave a nickel in to show him I wasn't cheap. Oh, I wouldn't have did it. I wouldn't have did it. That's why I think he's rich. Either rich or attached to one. Well, I do know. He's a good man, though. You can tell after talking with him. Good man? Yeah, he believes in honesty and helping your feller man and not being greedy and all that stuff. Well, good for him. That's what he writes about in them pamphlets he's giving away. See, where'd I put that when he give me one? Well, uh, what about this lantern he's carrying on? Cedric said he's carrying a lantern every place he went. Oh, yeah. That's the best part about it. He says he's carrying that lantern around with him to help find an honest man. An uh, honest man? Yeah, he says he's hunted might nigh the whole world over for an honest man. Ain't never found one. But he's bound and determined to keep going till he does. Well, what does he need the lantern for? Can he see good enough with electric lights to see if a feller's honest or not? Well, that lantern is just sort of a symbol, he said. He even keeps it lit in the daytime. What's the matter? Can he see good? Yeah, I, I asked him about that. His eyesight's all right. Oh, he told me a long rigmarole about some feller that lived a thousand or a million years ago named Diogenes. Diogenes? Yeah, he carried a lantern around that way looking for an honest man, and he never did find one, so this feller in town here now is carrying on the work for him. Well, I do know. Well. Fact is, he's named himself after him. Calls himself Diogenes Smith. <laughs> Diogenes? Hey, doggy, that's about as curious a sounding names I ever hear, I believe. I've never heard him before. Diogenes, well. Interesting talking sort of a feller, but I still think he must be a little titched, though. Yeah, well, I'd have to say something must be wrong with him, Mom. 
carrying a lit lantern around the daytime. That don't sound exactly right. He's sort of behind the door when the brains is passed out. Well, I reckon he's just trying to carry on just like that other Dodge and he's, he's telling me about. Well, yeah, but if he's going to pick out somebody to pattern himself after, Mom, he could have picked somebody better than that. Abraham Lincoln or George Washington. Why, sure. Some feller like that. Just what I was thinking whenever I was talking to him. Told me about him, but I, I don't think that first one was any too bright. He weren't, huh? No, he slept in a tub. In a tub? That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I believe I have read about him long. Yeah, yeah. Tells about him one of them uh, little nursery books over there Pearl has at the place. Uh, what become of the other two fellers? What other two fellers? Well, there was three of them. Don't you know, uh, at the uh, rubber dub dub three men in a tub? Oh, well, that's a different outfit, Abner. See, none of them was named Diogenes. Well, I don't know what their names were. I don't recollect now, but I do recollect one of them was a butcher, I believe, and uh, one of them was a baker. The other one was a candlestick oh, yeah. maker. Yeah, butcher and a baker and a candlestick yeah. maker. That's but they never that. slept in a tub, though. Well, they must have, Lom. They went out on the ocean in the thing. They had to sleep someplace. Well, just forget about them. This fellow ain't got nothing to do with that outfit. Well. He's just going around over the country looking for an honest man and learning folks to be honest. He's got a good idea, all right. Oh, yeah, 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 good idea. Facts is, I like everything about what you said about him, but that lantern, I still don't like that. Well, of course, it's all right, I reckon, if he wants to carry it, but... I do think he ought to blow it out in the daytime. Now, that ain't just right. Yeah, well, I don't know what his idea is, but he's causing a lot of talk down on the street, I know that. That's oh. all you can hear. <laughs> Why, sure, I'd love to see him myself. Uh, is he still down there at the lunchroom? No, he headed on down the street there, giving away them pamphlets and buttons. Well, I dog it if I can find him. I'm just a good mind to ask him to come over to our place tonight. Get a good night's rest for a change. Good night's rest. Why, sure. He can't get no rest trying to sleep in a tub all the time. I'll let him sleep there in a bed in a spare bedroom. Oh, well, he sleeps in beds. I thought you said he slept in a tub. Oh, no, I said Diogenes slept in a tub. Oh. Well, uh, what, what's this feller's name? Diogenes. Diogenes Smith. Huh? He just copying that other feller. But he don't sleep in no tub. The one that done that's dead. Oh, well, I ain't surprised. No, ain't a bit surprised in the world. Facts is, more than likely, he just wore himself out trying to get in a comfort position. That's just about what happened. That'd kill anybody trying to sleep in a little war stuff. Well, you don't have to worry about him, Abner. He done just what he wanted to do, I reckon. If he wanted to sleep in a tub, it was his own business. Oh, sure, sure. He might have been a little bitty fella, or it might have been a great big tub. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, might have been. Could have, yeah. Well, uh, what's this one trying to find an honest man for long? Well, he just wants to see if there is one, I reckon. Well, I can tell him that there is. I'll tell him that right now. I'm honest. Well, I am too. Or that is, neither one of us steals or nothing like that. No, but... sir, I don't. Well, he's looking for somebody that never told nothing but the honest truth in all his life, though. The truth all his life? Yes, sir. Hmm. Even when he was a little bitty boy, I reckon. Mm-hmm. Somebody okay. that ain't greedy or envious of his fellow man man that could turn his back to any sort of temptations. Mm, doggies. Uh, what about Brother Williams, a circuit rider? I told him about Brother Williams. Yeah, yeah. He said he'd look him up. Yeah, I don't know about when he was a little boy, but he's an awful good man now, I know that. Uncommonly good man. Yes, he is, yeah, yeah. But what he's looking for is going to be awful hard to find, I'll tell him that. I just glanced at that pamphlet here. He, he got some rules for right living. It'd be mighty hard for anybody to follow. They would, huh? Oh, yeah. He'd have to plow awful straight road. Hmm. Well, let, let's see that thing, huh? Yeah, what read it. be good for you, Abner. Wouldn't hurt nobody to follow what he's got laid out there. No, no. Well, I'm I'm proud to see he's in town. We can stand to have a man here in town like that telling us all how to live better. Won't hurt nobody. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yonder comes Cedric. He must have found him. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, yeah. What's that he got there? I don't know. Huh? Uh, did you find him, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Uh, what, what's all that stuff you got in your arms there? Oh, boy. Look. <laughs> Candy bars. Candy? Uh, I got about 30 of them, I think. Well, I do know. For the land sakes, look at that. Well, oh, oh, where'd you get them, Cedric? From honesty. From honesty. Yes, Mom, that honesty stuff sure works. It does. Yes, Mom. Them buttons that feller with the lantern was giving away set on them 
Honesty brings everything, and it sure does, too. Boy, look. <laughs> Fire oh, what's right all that got to do with the candy bars? Well, I, I got a whole bunch of them buttons from the feller, and pretty soon I had all these candy bars. Well, well, well what'd you do, Cedric? Did you, you just read the buttons, and then all of a sudden the candy fell in your lap? No, Mom, not exactly, but might not that easy. Well? See, I, I found out that by taking the wire pin off of the back of the buttons, they just fit in that nickel candy slot machine in the front of the barber shop there. So I just put them in and got the candy. Oh. Boy, that honesty sure worked. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I had no good lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the main topic of conversation in Pine Ridge seems to be the stranger who has just arrived in town. He calls himself Diogenes Smith. And after the legend of his namesake, the old Greek philosopher Diogenes, he carries a lantern and claims that he is searching for an honest man. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library with Grandpappy Spears back at his favorite spot, the library table reading the almanac. Listen. Hey, this sounds good, Abner. I think I'll take up this work. What work, Grandpa? Are you studying on that mandolin playing again? Oh, no. No, there ain't much coal for mandolin playing. I found that out. This is much better. Listen to this. Become a man of muscle in 30 days. A man of muscle? Yes, sir, in 30 days, according to the almanac. Well... Got a big ad here in the back of the book tells all about it. Develop a perfect physique with the new Marvel exercising machine. Why be ashamed to be seen in a bathing suit when just 15 minutes a day on the Marvel will give you rippling muscles and untold strength? Well, now, Grandpap, that ain't no sort of thing for you to be taking up at your age. I don't know why not. Feller named uh, Melvin Elkins of Staten Island, New York, read a letter here saying the Marvel machine increased my bicep six inches in one week. Well, I do know. Say it's made a new man out of him. That's what he written his letter. It made a new man out of me, he said. Yeah, well, I still think you're a little old for such as that, though. Well, that reminds me, Abner, talking about old as a... New man here in Pine Ridge, you ought to see him. Calls himself Dodge and E. Smith. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know all about him. Totes a lantern around. Yes, sir. Dodge and E. Smith. And you know what he does, Abner? Carries a lantern with him all the time. Well, that's just what I said. Yes, sir. Carries a lantern. Keeps it lit in the daytime. Claims he's looking for an honest man. Yeah. Wears his hair right long, gives away pamphlets and buttons telling about honesty and doing good and all such as that. Yeah, well, don't tell me about him, Grandpap. I already know all that. Oh, you do, huh? Why, of course, everybody in town knows that. Facts is, Lama saw him and talked to him. So was Cedric. Uh-huh. He increased his biceps six inches in one week. Who, Diogenes? No, Melvin Elkins of Staten Island, New York. Oh. Uh, Tells about it right here in the almanac. You can read it yourself. Well, I believe you, Grandpap. I thought we was talking about Diogenes. Or, wait a minute, wait a minute, there comes Lom. Huh? And don't be reading out loud now, Grandpap. Lom don't like it. He says you drive customers away. Oh, no, I won't. Why be ashamed to be seen in a bathing suit when you... We can just 15 mind minutes out, mind out, Grandpap, here he come. Well, morning, Lum. Yeah, morning, Abner. Granny's if I got some good news for you, Abner. Good news? What? What is it, Lum? Well, we're... Wait a minute, I didn't see Grandpap sitting there. No oh, way, yeah, he's reading over there. Uh, Grandpap, ain't you got some work to do at home or something? Huh? Lum asked if you didn't have some work to do, Grandpap. No, sorry, I can't help you out, Abner. Gotta get over to the post office and send a letter to Melvin Elkins. 
I'm going to get an exercise machine. Tell us about it right here now. I man. know it, I know it. Mind if I take the almanac along for the address? No, no. Proud to have you take it. Go on, take it with you. Yeah, well, I'll see you after a while, Abner. Yeah, all right. So long, Grandpa. Oh, what's that good news, Long? Well, Abner, you're going to have a chance to meet Dodge and E. Smith because he's coming over here to the store. He is? Yes, sir. And he's coming right away, too. Well? <laughs> Called me up at home and said he wanted to talk with me. Talk, huh? Confidential. For the land's sake. Yeah. I told him that you was my partner, so you can get in on the talk, too. Well, good for me. Well, what's the talk about, Long? I don't know. But I think he must have some big proposition to offer us. He has, huh? Yeah, it sort of sounded that way from how he was talking. I wonder what kind of a proposition he can offer. All he does is just go around giving out them pamphlets and buttons and telling them about being honest and right living and all that. He mm, carries that lantern, too. Yeah, yeah. Don't reckon he wants one of us to carry it, do you? I don't know. Might be what he's up to. Yeah, whatever be. it is, I'm curious to know. <laughs> yeah, me too. Don't forget he's rich now. Yeah, yeah. At least I think he is. You've heard how he leaves a 25-cent tip every time he eats at the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Well, Luke told me. Yesterday, he seen that little this Bates boy crying out on the street because his wagon had broke down. So what did Dodge and E. Smith do but take that young un right into Dick Huddleston's store and buy him the most expensive wagon in the place? Right. Doggies, he must be a thousandaire. Oh, at least that. A millionaire, maybe. For the land sakes. You're thinking... We ought to fix up the store here a little, maybe. Fix it up? Yeah. Better get a bucket of water and wash the winters, Abner. They're a sight. Wash the winters? Why, well, I've already washed them once this week. Well, you have not. Just look at them. Anybody can tell they ain't been washed for two months. Well, why don't you wash them then? I believe it's your turn anyway. It ain't no such a thing. Yeah. I done it last week. Well, you just now said yourself they ain't been dead for two months. Abner, don't argue with me. You know it wouldn't look right for me to be doing that kind of work. Now, get on, get a buck. Oh, too late now. There he comes. Who, Dodge and Eastman? Yeah, there oh. he is right out yeah, front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's getting to be a terrible world when you can't get your partner to do a little work around here. I know get that's him all right. Got his lantern with him, too. Yeah. Look at there. <laughs> I still think that's the silliest one thing I ever seen. Well, now, don't say that in front of him. Oh, no, 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 here he comes. Yeah, yeah. Well, how do you do, Mr. Diogeny? Wonderful world, Mr. Edwards. Wonderful world. Yeah, it is, ain't it? I'd like to have you meet my partner, Mr. Diogeny, or Mr. Smith. Uh, just Diogeny's friend. Just plain, simple, honest Diogeny's. Nothing more. Oh, well, Diogeny's, I'd like you to shake hands with... Abner Peabody. Wonderful world, Mr. Peabody. Yeah, wonderful, or how do do, sir? Truth is mighty and will prevail. Magna est veritas et prevalidit. Huh? Uh, that's from the Latin. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure, of course, Abner. You see, uh, that's from the Latin. From the Latin what? Hey, Chef Abner. Huh? Well, uh, what was you want to see me about, Mr. Er, uh, Dodge and Eagle? Oh, uh, yes, we must come to the point. There is so little time to do all we must do. Yes, so little time. Precious, precious time. Old Diogenes had not enough time to do his work, though he toiled with a ceaseless toil. And now I, the new Diogenes, now I am approaching my twilight years, and I have but barely begun my work. Well, uh, exactly what kind of work are you in, Mr. Diogenes? Damn. Uh, no, no, let him speak out. Let all speak out. Suppress nothing. The truth will out. Uh, what is it you wish to know, friend? Well, I... Uh... Uh, hush, wonderful world. Wonderful world. That is my goal. A wonderful world. But how do we attain that? Through honesty. Through honesty and kindness. Through the helping hand. Do you like Ferris wheels? Ferris wheels? Oh, yeah, I reckon so. Uh, I don't. Round and round, round and round. They get no place. We must. But how do we spread honesty? Through mankind. Through you and you. Through your fellow men. Friends, I must find an honest man. And I must find him soon. For the taper in this life of mine burns low. What's he talking about, now? And that's why I'm here in your peaceful little hamlet. I've sent the feeble light of my lantern into every corner of our cities. 
but to no avail. Now I have turned to green grass, the fresh wind of the country, back to earth, the clean dirt. The clean dirt. Aptly put, friend, aptly put. And now I need your advice. Do you, my friends, think that here I shall find my honest man? Oh, sure you will, Dardini. Now, there's uh, Brother Williams. Say no more. You have answered my question. Now, here is my proposition. I have money, yes. But with it, I can buy nothing. Nothing I want. Nothing good. Well. So I must give it away. I must find an honest man and give it to him as a reward. As an inspiration to the whole world to follow this man. This is my one hope for a wonderful world. Uh, just a minute now, Dargeny. You, you mean you're actually going to give your money away? Uh, to him who shall be judged the most honest, the most kind, and the most helpful, I shall give $10,000. 10000 Doggy. Uh, but this man, this woman, or this child must be found within three months. If he is not found by then, I must move on and continue my search in a still more fertile field. Well, look, Dodge, uh, how, how are you going to tell this fellow when you found him? Oh, that, my friends, is simple. By sundown, five citizens of your peaceful town shall be chosen as my helpers. They will observe and report to me. But they shall be sworn to secrecy. Never shall their identity be known. No one will ever know when he's being watched. No one will know. Farewell, friends. Well, wait a minute, Dargenese. Don't rest. A on. wonderful world, Mr. Edwards. Uh, Dargenese, we want to ask you some a more questions. A wonderful world. Well, here, Dargenese. Don't just... holler at him, Edward. Well, well, I want to talk to him. Well, we'll see him some more. He's going to be here for three months. Yeah. We know that for sure. Granny's ten thousand dollars. Dog as he's richer than I figured he was. Oh yeah. Imagine giving ten thousand dollars to somebody just for being honest and kind and giving each other a helping <laughs> hand. <laughs> yeah, reckon who them five helpers are gonna be. Lord, I don't know. Wait a minute. Where's that bucket? I better get started washing them windows long. Washing windows? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, Abner, I'll do that. I uh, got to thinking. In fact, it, it, it's really my turn to do it. Well, I don't care whose turn it is. I want to do it. Now, where's the bucket? Wait a minute, Abner. I, I got a better idea. Huh? We'll do it together. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful world, Abner. Wonderful world. <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I had dog Lama, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John him down store. This is Lama and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, since Diogenes Smith offered $10,000 for the person who will be judged the most honest, kind, and helpful during the next three months, everyone in Pine Ridge has turned over a new leaf and is striving to become a model citizen. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum in the Jotham Down store discussing the matter with Mousy Gray, the delivery boy. Listen. Gee, ten thousand dollars. Do you really think he'll give away that much money, Lum? Why, of course he will, Mousy. He said he wouldn't. If there's any one feller that tells the truth or ought to be, it's Dodge and E. Smith. Honesty's the main thing in his life. Yes, sir. Gee, ten thousand dollars. You know, Lum, ten thousand dollars would be just like a mother to me. <laughs> well, naturally, it'll be like a mother and a papa and six or seven uncles to me. And to get it, you just have to be picked as the most honest man in the community. Is that all? Yeah, the most honest, kind, and best lender of the helping hand. Yes. But now, don't think that's easy. This contest, or whatever you want to call it, goes on for three months. Yes, sir. And that means you've got to be honest and all them other things every minute of the time. Because you never know when you're being watched. You see, Dodge and Easy's pinted five fellers to help him keep watch on everybody. And nobody knows who they are. Yes, sir, I know that, Lon. Oh, you do? 
Wait a minute. You ain't been picked out as one of the help... Er, no, I reckon you couldn't tell me no way. Dodge and he swore his helpers to secrecy. Yes, sir. Well, you better get out with the delivers, Mousy. It's getting late. Yes, sir. I'll go right now. And, uh, Mousy, just in case you're picked out as one of the helpers, don't forget how honest and fair I've been in all my dealings with you. No, sir, I won't. Well, I'll be back soon, Long. Yeah, wonderful world, Mousy. Wonderful world, Long. Hello, jot them down, store and library, lum editors talking. Wonderful world. Oh, hello, Miss Eastrunk. Huh? Oh, yeah, we got some awful good flour. Best you can get, er, well, to be honest, it ain't the best. Facts is, Miss Eastrunk, it ain't very good at all. No, Mom, you can get some a heap better over at Dick Huddleston's store for the same price. Well, howdy, Long. Yes, Mom. Oh, excuse me, never seen you on the phone. Oh, that's all right, Miss Eastrunk. You can always depend on us to tell the truth about things. Uh, all right. Goodbye. Uh, Ma? Oh, yeah. Wonderful world. Granny, I don't know about this honesty stuff, Abner. Dog is everybody in town sure excited over it. There, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you ought to see how everybody's acting. They all go around saying wonderful world and trying to be nice and kind and honest and stuff. Oh, yeah. There ain't no doubt that Dodge and Easy's turned this town upside down. Yeah. As soon as he announced that $10,000 prize, everybody got on their best behavior right away. I noticed that. Yeah, he made a change in Snake Hogan. Snake Hogan? Yes, sir. Well, Granny, he can't win the prize. Not a mean feller like him. Well, he's trying for it, though. This morning he got mad and beat up on a feller, and then he picked the feller up and apologized to him and brushed his clothes off for him. Well, I do know. I didn't know he'd improve himself <laughs> that way. The best one, though, Sister Simpson, Lum. She's trying awful hard for that honesty prize. Mose Moots overheard her tell Diogenes that she was 57 year old. 57? Yes, sir. Why, she ain't never admitted to more than 35 as long as I can recollect. I know it. <laughs> oh, once I believe she did get up to 36, but then she dropped right back to 32 for several seasons. Yeah, well, she's 57 now. Said it herself. <laughs> I dog as I believe this Dodge and these fellers doing Pine Ridge a heap of good long. Oh, yeah, it ain't no getting around it, Danny. Them's good rules for right living he set up for us. Yeah. I don't care who you are. I just wish I knowed who the five helpers was, though. Make it a heap easier to measure up to them rules. Well, nobody ain't supposed to know who they're. Dodge and these don't want you to know. Yeah, I know. Listen, Abner, don't say nothing to nobody about it, but I sort of suspicion Mousy's one of them. Mousy Gray? Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir, he, sir. I, I was talking to him about it just before you come in. And whilst he never come right out flat-footed and admitted he was, he never denied it, neither. Well, I do know. So I don't think it'd hurt none for us to be sort of nice to Mousy. Yeah, yeah. Lend him the helping hand and all. Yeah, don't worry. I'll be nice to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud you told me that, Lum. Reckon Mouse would like to have his shoes shined every day. More than likely he would, but don't make it too plain that you're trying... Wait a minute. What's the matter? Oh, no. <laughs> Thought I seen Squire heading this way, but he cut across the street. Uh... Oh, dog, as there's one fellow we don't need to worry about getting an honesty prize. He wouldn't have a chance in the world. Oh, no. <laughs> Old Squire's got so many black marks again in his character, he knows better than to even try for it. Sure. I reckon he wishes now he'd have led a more honest kind of a life. Yeah, more likely he's madder than a wet hen because he ain't got no chance at that $10,000. <laughs> well, yeah, what he'll do is wait till somebody wins it and then try to trick him out of it. That's yeah. his way of doing business. Snake in the weeds. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look who's coming up out there. Huh? Oh, Dodge and Eve. Yeah. Still toting that lantern, ain't he? <laughs> yeah. Now, try to keep from making any more of them ignorant remarks in front of him this time, Abner. I never said no ignorant remarks. Oh, oh, oh. Well, how'd it do, Dodge? Our wonderful world, Dodge and Eve. Wonderful world, Mr. Edwards. Uh, wonderful world, Mr. Peabody. Wonderful world, Dodge uh, The seed has been sown, friends. The seed has been sown and already is bearing fruit. Hi, Doug, is that you went into the farming business, Dodge and Eve? Ah, yes, farming. <laughs> yes, I'm a farmer of mankind. Fields of, of honesty, acres of kindness. Wonderful world. Wonderful world. Wonderful world. Ah, your citizens, how they've reacted to my plan. Everyone striving for the truth. Everyone becoming generous, lending the helping hand. Uh, that is, uh, everyone except one man. Yeah, I reckon we know who you mean, Dodge. <laughs> We're just talking about him before ever you come in. Yeah, that old squad. Uh, hush, hush, mention not names. 
Let us be charitable in all our acts. Oh. We'll soon overcome the stragglers. Let us be happy with the wonderful results we've achieved in two days. Think what we'll have when the three months are done. A utopia. A model village. Good for us. Then the germ of honesty will spread to nearby villages. Thence to the cities. Thence throughout the whole world. Ah, friends. At last my work has found a fertile field. Now I must work harder than ever. Now I must use all my... En- uh, what's in that room back there? Huh. Oh, that's our feed room. Keep sacks of feed and hay and stuff like that. Oh, that's too bad. I I thought perhaps it was empty. You see, I need a place to work. A place to write my pamphlets. A place to print them, send them flowing into the channels of the world. Well, we'll fix it up for you, darling. Oh, no, I... You have need of the room. No, no, we don't. I'll have Abner clean it out. Or I'll clean it out. No, no, I'll it. clean it out, Long. Be proud to do it, now. <laughs> well, your persistence has won me over, friends. I shall take the room as my workshop. But I shall pay you well for it. Oh, no, no we wouldn't think of letting you pay for it. You can have it for nothing. Why, sure you can. We don't want no money. No, no, I must pay for what I get. We all must pay for what we get. Yeah, but not for this, Diogenes. We we want to lend the helping hand. Of course we do. We're awful kind and, and honest, too. Oh, yes, yes, you are. Uh, what course does your kindness leave for me but to accept your generous offer? And I shall move in as soon as my little printing press can arrive. Uh, my little... But mighty voice of honesty. Well, good, good. You, you, you can get your printing press here just as soon as you can, Dodge Knees. And anything else we can help you with, why, just let us know. Yes, sir, especially if you've got any honest work to do. Oh, kind, kind friends. Your offers shall not go begging. And I must leave you now to send for my printing press. But I shall soon return with a bottle of pickles. A bottle of pickles? Yes, yes. A kind, honest old lady in Shelby, Ohio, once gave them to me. Well? A fine woman. Uh, Well, I must leave. Wonderful world, friends. Wonderful world, Arjun. Wonderful world. Granny, he's a curious sort of a fellow. Yes, sir. Sometimes he almost seems a little touched. I can't keep up with him. Yeah, he's a good man, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, there ain't no good in him, no, sir. And I think we made a good impression on him by giving him the feed room to work in. <laughs> uh, I, I believe me and you just practically win that $10,000 already. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can tell how he acted when we said we didn't want nothing first. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, there comes Squire back across the street. Looks like he's coming in here this time, too, long. Yeah. Granny, did you hear Dodge and he's tell how Squire weren't following none of them right living rules? Well, he never said it was Squire, Mom. No, but I know that's who he meant. Oh, yeah, more likely. Now, <laughs> Joe Squire's the maddest feller in town right now. <laughs> yeah, look how he's stomping in the store. Yeah. There. <laughs> well, howdy, Squire. Yeah, how are you today, Squire? Well, gentlemen, gentlemen. Glad to see my good friend. What can we do for you, Squire? Oh, I just dropped in uh, to pay you this little grocery bill. I've been on you for several years long. Uh, huh? Yes, yes, here you are. Uh, $69.72, I believe that's correct. Well, I'll swan to goodness. And, uh, Rum, uh, here's an extra dollar, too. Uh, that's to cover several cans of tobacco I've taken when Cedric was in the store alone here. I don't know for sure, but I think he might have failed to put it down on the book, so keep a dollar. Well, good day, gentlemen, good day. Wonderful world. Uh, oh, wonderful world, Squire. Wonderful world. Is that I believe that's our ring. I dog it, Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John him down store. This is Lum and Abner. And now? 
Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, it looks like everyone, even Squire Skimp, is out to win the $10,000 that Diogenes Smith has offered to the most honest, kind, generous, and helpful person in the community. However, the good citizens seem to be spending most of their energies not on trying to attain these virtues, but on trying to discover the names of the five secret deputies which Diogenes has appointed to help observe and report on the townsfolk. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum in the Jotham Down store. Cedric has just entered. Listen. Well, morning, Cedric. Come on in. Wonderful world, Cedric. Wonderful world, Mr. Lum. Well, for goodness sake, Cedric, what are you carrying a lantern for? Do you think you're another Diogenes? Oh, no, Mom. You ain't heard about that contest Mr. Diogenes is having in, huh? Well, yeah, of course I have, but carrying a lantern ain't going to help you win it. Oh, yes, it will. That's what the contest is for. Mr. Diogenes is going to give $10,000 to the feller that can keep a lantern lit for three months. Oh, no, Cedric. You, you got that all wrong. The contest is to see who can be the most honest and kind and generous and lend the helping hand and brotherly love and all that stuff. Well, he told me something about keeping the lantern lit. Well, he just meant the lantern of honesty. That lantern of his is a sort of a symbol of honesty. So he meant for you to keep it being honest all them three months. Well, just the same, I'm going to keep my lantern lit. I'd sure like to win that money, boy. Grannies, who wouldn't? If a feller could just find out who them five deputies was, it'd be a heap easier to know who to be kind and honest to. Deputies? What deputies? Well, them's the five people Diogenes is appointed to help watch everybody and make reports on who's honest and who ain't and stuff. But nobody ain't supposed to know who them five are. They ain't, huh? No, and nobody ain't supposed to say yes or no if somebody asks them if they're a deputy. Facts is, Diogenes says it's again the rules to even try to find out who the deputies is. Oh, well, are you a deputy, Mr. Lum? I ain't allowed to say, Cedric. I'll tell you one thing, though, Cedric. This is just tricks me and you, though. But I'm might not sure that Abner's one of them. Mr. Abner is? Yes, sir. But don't you let nobody know that I told you. Because we ain't supposed to mention no names. I'm telling you this would put me out of the contest right there. Oh, no, Mama, I won't tell nobody. I can just tell by the way Abner keeps watching me and listening to everything I say that he's been a pinehead. And the worst part about it is I have to be so all far nice to the little varmint all the time. Well, I guess I better be nice to Mr. Abner, too. What's a good way to be nice to him? Oh, I don't know. Wait a minute, that's our ring, I believe. I, I think I'll be running along, Mr. Lum. I, I want to carry my lantern where Mr. Dodge and East can see me. I I'll see you later. Wonderful world. A wonderful world, Cedric. <laughs> Hello, jot them down store and library. Lum Edwards talking. Wonderful world. Oh, howdy, Mose. Yeah, what's on your mind, Mose? Cedric. Oh, no, no, he ain't a deputy. Yeah, I know he's carrying a lantern around, but that don't mean nothing. He, he just got a little mixed up, that's all. <laughs> No, no, he's the one better we don't need to be worried about. Who? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I was afraid Uncle Henry Lunsford would be one of them. Yeah, I, I know he'll turn in a bad report on me. He don't like me at all. Are you sure he's been pinted? Oh, wait a minute. I see Abner and Grandpap coming up. I, I don't want Abner to hear us talking. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you later. Yes, sir, Mose. A pound of lard and a can of cool oil. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Wonderful world. Come on in, Grandpap. Hey, howdy, Lump. Er, wonderful world, Lump. Wonderful world, Abner. How are you, Grandpap? Wonderful world, Lump. Uh, who, who was you talking to on the phone, Dodgenese? No, no, just Mose Moods. One of a few groceries. Oh. Uh, Abner, will you watch the store for a little while? I've got to make the deliveries. You've got to make... Well, what's the matter with Mousy? He's supposed to do the delivering. I know, but I, I let him have the day off. Thought the rest would do him good. Well, I don't... Oh, I know. You're just trying to be nice to Mousy because you think he's a dep... Or nothing, nothing. It ain't nothing of the sort, Abner. I'm just a natural, kind, and generous feller, that's all. 
All is ready to lend a helping hand. Yeah. Uh, I'll be back directly. Well, all right, but don't hurry now. I'll do all the work here along. No, no, now you just take it easy, Abner. I'll do the work. Wonderful world. Wonderful world. Yeah, wonderful world. Doggy's grandpap, that's the first time I ever seen old Lum offer to make a deal ever. <laughs> Of course, it's easy to see why he's doing it. He thinks Mousy's a deputy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> About all he does is study up ways to be nice to Mouse and show how honest he is. Almost disgusting. Well, is Mousy sure enough a deputy? I don't know, Grandpa. Sometimes I figure he is, and then sometimes I figure he ain't. Of course, that, now, we ain't supposed to talk about that, though, Grandpa. It's again the rule. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. We yeah. won't talk about no, it. No, no, again the rule. Well, I... Uh, Reckon I better get down to some reading in the library here, then. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't start that, Grandpap. I'm getting sick and tired of having you read all the time. Well, why don't we just sit here and have a checker game like we used to? Yeah. Checkers, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> you had a good game and a long spell. Get out the board yeah, there. Yeah, see, I'll get just... skinning. Where did I put that thing? Oh, hit it, hit it, got you. Yeah, more likely Lums hit it. Yeah, he put it back there. I'll watch where he hit it. All right. <laughs> a little rusty on this, but you sort of make it more of an even match. Me being sort of rusty. Ah, oh, prattle, prattle. Which do you want, the red ones or the black ones? Don't make no difference. Beat you if either one of them. The blacks, I reckon. Ah, uh, say, Grandpa. Yeah? I had an aim to tell you this, but uh, do you, you want to know who one of them deputies is? Ah, uh, Abner, we ain't supposed to talk about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Who is it? It's Lum. Lum? Yes, sir. I know just as sure of the world he's one of them. He watches me like a hawk. No matter where I'm at or what I'm doing, he's well, one of them. I do know. I never expected him. I think I even seen him writing down some notes about me the other night. And you heard him talking to Mose Moots on the phone when we come in just now. Yeah, what's that got to do with it? Well, I've heard that Mose is a deputy. Mose? So Lum was more likely giving Mose a report on me to pass on to Diogenes. Well, how do you know Mose is one of them? Ezra C. Strunk said he was. Ezra C. Strunk? Yes, sir. Told me in secret. Why, well, Walt Bates told me Ezra was one of them. Ezra? Well, I just wish that Lum weren't, I know that. So it gets me so mad around here sometimes I can't hardly stand myself and I can't say nothing back to him. Just have to keep being nice and kind to him. Can't say what I actually think. Can't, huh? Oh, no. You mean you hold back the truth? Why, sure. I can't come right out and say something at that long. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you a deputy, Grandpa? Well, I ain't allowed to say one way or the other, Abner. Oh, wonderful world, Grandpa. Wonderful world. Go on, go on. It's your move, Grandpa. You can be first. No, you go ahead and move first, Abner. No, sir, now you be first. I'm generous. Well, so am I. Go ahead. No, you're just trying to get me to be first so you can say I'm selfish. I ain't no such a thing. You're just stubborn, that's all. That's what's American. Who's you. stubborn? You are. Why, you're the stubbornest old coot in the whole world. Now, wait a minute. Nobody can call me old coot and get away with I it. I just don't. Now, it. take your old Checker game. I'm leaving. Well, go on, leave. Don't ever come back. Don't no more, you worry. Either. I won't. Wonderful world, Grandpa. Wonderful world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dog is he gonna ever win that ten thousand dollars? Whether he's a deputy or not, anybody's mean it. Well, howdy, Cedric. Howdy, Mister Abner. Where was Mr. Grandpap going so fast? Might not knock me down. Oh. Uh, was you and him fighting again? Oh no, no, just a misunderstanding, Cedric. Oh, it's what you carrying the lantern for. Oh, I'm out to win that contest. Have you saw Mr. Dodge and these any place? No, I ain't, Cedric. Facts is, I almost wished I'd never heard of him. Seems like everybody's one of his deputies. You have to be so dad blame careful everything you say and do. Get to where I hate and despise everybody. Er, don't you tell nobody I said that, though, Cedric. No, oh, Bob, I won't. Though you're the only safe person left in town to talk to, Cedric. I'm going to win that $10,000 if I have to lie to do it. Yes, Mom, I, I sure wish I could find Mr. Dodge and he's, though. I, I want to show him my lantern. Well, I don't know where... Wait a minute, wait a minute. There comes Long back from a delivery. Though, is he couldn't have got them did this fast. Uh, more likely just coming back here to spy on me is what he's up to. Spy on you? Yeah, he's one of the deputies, Cedric. Oh, for goodness sakes, don't tell him none of the things that I just said. No, Mom, I won't. Find out, find out, find out. Don't say a word now. Don't let on. Look at him. He's peeking in the window there, spying at me. 
come and sleep in in there. Well, wonderful world, Long. Wonderful world, Abner. I run off and forgot half the groceries I was supposed to deliver. Oh, well, I'll be proud to load them up for you, Long. No, I'll do it, Abner. I want you to overwork yourself. Oh, it ain't no work at all. Glad to lend a helping hand. Er, wait a minute, wait a minute. I better get the phone for it. Now, just sit down. Take it easy, Long. Rest yourself. Hello, jot them down, store, Abner Peabody talking. Wonderful world. Cedric, you never told Abner none of them things I said to you. Who? No, Mom, I never said a word. Cedric, we hunt. Yeah, he's here. Just a minute, just a minute. Here, Cedric, it's for you. For me? Boy, who is it? I don't know. I couldn't recollect the voice. Hello? Hello? Yeah, this is me. Oh, 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 yeah. I know quite a bit about them. Mom? Oh, yeah. Wonderful world, Mr. Diogenes. Diogenes? For the land sake. My goodness, I believe we found out who one of the deputies is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find out, find out. Well, sit down, Cedric, old boy. Here, Abner, get that chair there. Yeah, yeah, sure. Here, Cedric, here, sit down, sit down. Wait a minute, I'll get you a cigar for you, Cedric. Here, let me get this pillar so you can lean back and rest yourself, Cedric. Wonderful world, Cedric. Wonderful world, Cedric. Abner, I believe that's our ring. I dog it, Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Diogenes Smith's contest to find the most honest, kind, and generous person in Pine Ridge moves onward with everyone suspecting everyone else of being one of the five secret deputies appointed to help Diogenes select the winner. Yesterday, Cedric received a phone call from Diogenes which convinced Lum and Abner that Cedric was definitely a deputy. As we look in on the little community today, we find Cedric in the front of the Jotham Down store while Lum and Abner are back in the feed room, cleaning it out for Diogenes to move in. Listen. Yeah, scrub the floor good, Abner. We don't want a speck of dirt left in the feed room again. Diogenes moves his printing presses and stuff in here. No. Oh, Lord, me, he'd be able to eat his meals right off the floor. It's so clean, Lum. Uh, push that bucket of water over this way, will you? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, look. Huh? Look up in front there. Wait. C- Cedric just taking some candy out of the candy case. Dog is he won't never win the honesty prize that way. Oh, well, that's all right, Abner. I told Cedric he could take some candy. Take some for nothing? My corpse. Don't forget, he's one of Diogenes' deputies. Oh, oh, oh. You was in the store when Diogenes called him up yesterday, wasn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot, yeah. Don't you know Diogenes told him to come over to his place and tell him all he knowed about somebody or something? Yeah, yeah. That's proof right there that he's a devil. Why, sure. <laughs> hey, go ahead. Have some more candy, Cedric. Have all you want. Yes, Mom. Wonderful world. Wonderful, Wonderful world, world, Cedric. Don't get I just hope he don't clean up all the candy we got there. Oh, I don't care if he does. After we win that $10,000, we'll be able to buy a million dollars worth of candy if we want it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fact is, we might just close up this store, sell it, and retire ourselves. Yeah, that's a thing to do. Just buy some expensive cars and go fishing, stuff like that all the time. <laughs> of course, though, we ain't win the money yet long. No, but I figure one of us is a dead cinch to win it, as long as we're letting Dodge and he's have this feed room for his printing shop. That gives us sort of the inside track right there. It does, huh? Why, sure. Letting him have the room for nothing shows we're generous. Yeah, yeah. Fixing it up this way shows we're lending the helping hand. Sure. And then having him around here most of the time will give us a chance to show him how honest we are. <laughs> well, what can we do to show him that we're honest, Long? Well, I studied up one thing. He did? Yeah, on some awful rainy day, I'm going to shortchange somebody two cents. Short change them. And then I'll walk ten miles through the rain just to return them two pennies. Oh. <laughs> well, good them. for you. Yeah, that's a dandy. Old Honest Lum, I think that's what I'll have people call me. 
at least during these three months of the contest. Old Honest Long. Yeah, yeah. How, how does uh, old helping hand Abner sound? Oh, I don't know, Abner. I reckon we better just concentrate on Honest Mom and get that spread around first. We had, huh? Yeah, I'll get Cedric to start calling me that. You know, it ain't going to hurt nothing having Cedric be a deputy. No, no. Just so as you don't eat up all our groceries for the three months is up. Thanks, is I've had a few little talks with him already. Telling him what a fine, kind fellow I am and all such as that. Well, uh, did you say anything about me? Hey, Mr. Long, Mr. Abner. Hey, what is it, Cedric, old boy? Can I give some candy to a friend of mine? Why, sure, anything you want, Cedric. Yeah, the store is yours, Cedric. Yes, sir, we're awful generous, Cedric. Yes, Mom, you sure are. Wonderful world. Wonderful world, Cedric. <laughs> yes, Abner, that's a good invest we're making right there. Giving out a couple of little pieces of candy to win ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I believe having Cedric be a dapper is going to work out all right. You know, I almost feel sorrowful for all these other folks that's st- trying so hard to win Dodge in these contest lums. Well, I don't. Serves them right. Does, huh? Well, yeah, they're all being so nice and falling all over themselves to do things for Dodge and these, and you know, Dad, blame well they don't actually mean it. Just doing it to get the prize. Of course they are. Hypocrites, that's what they are. Yeah, that's just what they are. Hypocrites, nothing else. Yeah, take Squire Skim, for instance. They ain't a crookeder feller in this town. No. Fellers Diogenes around and telling him how honest he is. Even give Diogenes an insurance policy for nothing. Why, that snake in the weeds. And that's the way with everybody else. All acting so unnatural kind and generous. Why now it makes me sick and disgusted. Yeah, me too. I hate to see it. Well, come on. We better be getting this feed room fixed up for Dodge and he brings his printing presses over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hurry up and finish scrubbing the floor so I can put the rug down. Yeah, yeah, we want to get the rug. We ain't got no rug. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you, I brung a rug down this morning. Huh? It's out and back there. Well, oh, where'd you get a rug? What's the one over at my place? I just thought Diogenes might not like to have to walk around on this bar floor and be nice to have something soft to walk around on. Oh, well, don't you need it long? Oh, no, no, I can get along without it. I don't walk around the house much. You don't, huh? Besides, I can keep my shoes on till just before I get in bed. Yeah. I just leave them on, then I'll have them on the next morning so I won't have to get out on a cold floor. Well, it's cold weather. It wouldn't hurt you none. No, be on comfort maybe, but Great. might be a good idea. Get over Squire Skimp and Ezra Seastrom and all them fellas trying to be so all far nice to Dodge and <laughs> Me neither. See, Lum, long as we're putting a rug in here, why, maybe we ought to have a lamp in here for Dodge and Ease, too. Yeah, that's a good idea, Abner. <laughs> you know, them others ain't never going to win the prize that way, because Dodge and Ease can see right through them. Sure. He can tell they ain't sincere. Why, of course he can. Uh, maybe we ought to have a chair in here, too, Lum. Yeah, I believe we ought. Nice big comfort chair. Yeah, yeah. One he can relax in when he's thinking up what to write in them pamphlets he prints. Yeah, may- maybe a couch, too, so he can sort of lay down when he gets tired. Yeah, Davenport. Yeah, yeah. Why, sure. Writing them pamphlets is hard work. Fellow needs a rest when he's doing that kind of work. Oh, my, yes. Can you get that couch down here today? Why, sure. I'll just get the Macmillan boys, bring it over here on their truck. Won't cost much. Well, facts is, as long as they've got such a big truck, why... I believe I'll just have them bring down all our furniture out of the parlor. Yeah, that's the best idea yet. Yeah. Yeah, may as well make Dodge and Ease real comfort while we're at it. Oh, fine, man. Yeah. Get a special table for him to put his lantern on, too. Yeah. <laughs> he prizes that lantern more than every one thing he's got. Yes, sir, we got just a table for that, too, over there. Well, good for you. All right, dog is bringing all my furniture over here ought to win me the prize, oughtn't it? Well, it ought to win for one of us. I don't think we ought to tell him who brung what, though. Well, that ain't fair, though, Lom. All you brung is a rug, and, and look I, what all I'm bringing. All right, all right. If you want it that way, I'll just bring over my rocking chair and the bureau. And that moose head I got hanging up on the wall. Granny's, I'll even bring over my bed. That's what I'll do. Your bed? Why, sure. Well, what are you going to sleep on? Well, don't worry. I'll find something. Some old sacks or something. It don't matter about me. Huh. I just want to see the dodge in his comfort, that's all. Well, I don't care. You can bring all that stuff on. Everything you want to. Don't make... Wait a minute. Where are we going to put all this stuff? Well, we put it right here. That's right. 
The speed room ain't very big. Why, of course not. It'll never hold all that long. I guarantee you, I know what we'll do. We'll make it bigger. Make it bigger? Yes, sir. We'll get some lumber and some carpenters and build an annex onto the feed room. That's what we'll do. Well, good for us. And I'll pay for it out of my own pocket, too. Oh, no, you won't. I'm going to pay for half of it now. Abner, this was my idea, and I'm going to pay for it. Not for all of it, you ain't. I'm just as kind and generous as you are. Oh, no, you ain't, I am. And there ain't no use of you trying to make Dodge and his thank you, Eric, because he can see right through things like that. Ah. He's got a second or a third sight or something like that. I don't care how many sights he's got. God, I'm going to pay my share of that annex. Don't forget, I own half of this store. Wait a minute. What's going on up in front there? What's the trouble? Looky there. I reckon what that Cedric's doing there. For goodness sakes, he's got about a hundred youngins up there. Goodness, they're lined up clean across the street there. Yeah, look there. Why, they're carrying away candy and groceries and stuff, huh? Wait Look at that. Minute. Cedric, Cedric, come back here a minute, Cedric. Cedric. Come here, Cedric. This one. Come on back here. Careful what you say to him now, Lon. Don't forget, he's a deputy. Yeah, I know it. More than likely, I have to let him get away with it, whatever he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, blame it. Find out. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful world. Wonderful world, Cedric. Yeah, wonderful world. What are you doing up there, Cedric? Yeah, what do you mean giving them young'uns all that stuff? Well, you said I could have everything in the store, but I, I couldn't use all of it myself, so I'm giving some of it away. Boy, it's fun, too. Wonderful world. Oh, wonderful world. Yeah, but Cedric, that's going a little too far now. Wait a minute here. Hold on. Just because Dodge and he's appointed you one of his deputies ain't no sign you can take advantage of. No, sir. Deputies? I ain't been appointed no deputy. At least not that I know of. Huh? You mean you ain't no deputy, sure enough, Cedric? No, Mom. Yes, you are, too. You ain't fooling us. What about that phone call you got from Dodge and E's yesterday, asking you to come over and tell him something? Oh, that. Oh, he, he just busted his lantern. He wanted me to tell him how to fix it. That was all. Well, why didn't you tell us what he wanted instead of letting us go around here thinking you was a deputy? Yeah, that's what I say. Uh, 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 don't forget. Wonderful world. A wonderful, wonderful world. world. I believe that's our ring. Hi, Dog Islam. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Down store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the feed room of the Jotham Downs store is now completely furnished and ready for Diogenes Smith to move in with his printing press. The old fellows are quite confident that this generous move on their part will give them a decided advantage in the contest to win the $10,000 which Diogenes is offering to the most honest, kind, and generous person in Pine Ridge. As we look in on the little community, we find Lum in the Jotham Downs store and library, and Abner has just entered. Listen. Well, morning, Abner. Morning, Mom. All right, doggies, ain't you down awful early this morning? Early? Well, I've been here for three hours already. Three hours? Yes, sir. And what's more, I sat up till night night, ten o'clock last night, working on these pamphlets. Grannies, I'm wore to a frazzle already. Wore to a frazzle. Well, that's too bad you have to do so much work. Pamphlets? Did you say you was working on pamphlets? Yeah, Granny's Abner. This is the best one idea I ever studied up. I've decided to become a sort of a helper for Diogenes. Huh? I'm going to help him write them pamphlets he puts out. I might even help him print them. I don't know. Well, does he want somebody to help him? Well, I never heard him say he did, but I reckon he does. Uh Uh-huh. And I figured as long as he's going to be printing his stuff back there in the feed room, it'd be right handy for me to be his assistant. Yeah. I could think up ideas on right living and stuff while I'm working in the store here, and then go back and run the printing press while Dodge and is out to lunch or something. 
Yeah, that's a good idea, Long. Thing is, if that don't put me in solid with Diogenes, I don't know what will. <laughs> yeah, sure, I believe I'll start thinking up some ideas for pamphlets, too. Well, I don't believe you're cut out for such work as that, Abner. You better leave this to me. Besides, I, I don't think it'd look right for both of us to be doing it. Well, why wouldn't it? Oh, you know, one thing or another just wouldn't look good, that's all. Dodge and ease my suspicion we just trying to win the $10,000 prize. Well, ain't we? Yeah, but we get to be more subtile about it. Besides, huh. I've got enough pamphlets read up here to last Dodge and ease a couple of weeks at least. Here, here let, let me read some of them to you. Well, I don't see why I can't think up of some ideas too long. This one's called, uh, Him Who Is Honest Will Triumph by Dodge and E. Smith and Honest Long. Honest Long? Yeah, don't you recollect? That's what I'm calling myself now. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, listen to this. When a feller is still a young un, he ought to practice telling the truth so that again he gets to be I a grown man. I wish I could have some other name during a contest. Abner, are you listening to this or not? I'm listening. Him who is honest will triumph. I hear that. But I think I ought to have a name too, Lom. Like, uh, Honest Abner. Or Honest Ab. That, that sounds like Honest Abe. R- reckon I ought to just take the name of Lincoln for the contest? Oh, of course not. Well, Lincoln was known for being awful honest. Yeah, of course he was, but that ain't going to help you no way. Ain't, huh? Listen, Abner, I've been studying about this contest, and here's how I got it figured out. Just one fella can win that $10,000 for being the most honest, kind, and generous and helping person in Pine Ridge, so there ain't no use for both of us to try for it. Ain't, huh? Well, natural, both of us can't win, so why don't we pull together and both help one of us win the prize? That way, we'll have a heap better chance to win. Yeah, I reckon we would. And since I've already started using the name of Honest Mum, and besides that, I'll have the inside track by helping Diogenes with his pamphlets, I figure I ought to be the one to win. You, well, now, wait a minute. Honest Mum. Uh... Honest, Lom, yes, I'm sir. just as kind and helping handed as you are. Well, of course you are, Abner, but if we concentrate on me and work together instead of fighting again one another, we'll be might not sure winning. Don't forget that old lettered saying of mine, a house divided against itself is, uh, how does that go, separated or something. Well, I don't see why I ought not to help but win all that money, Lom. Well, don't worry about the money, Abner. After I win, I'll divide up with you. You'll get your share, all right. I will, huh? Well, sure. Well, I don't know. I'd still like to be known as a winner, though. It'd just tick a little pearl half to death if her papa was to be known as a winner. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? Look out there. Dodge and he's getting out of that truck that just drove up. Hi, Granny, his printing press must have got here. I'd even got my name in the weekly paper. Honest Ab Peabody. Stop mumbling, Abner. Can't you see Dodge and he's coming in there? I can see him all right. Well, pay more attention. Don't forget now. you got to help me bring up the subject of these pamphlets I've read. Him who is honest will triumph and all that. Bring up a subject? Why, of course. I can't just come right out flat-footed and tell him I'm going to be his helper. I have to work up to it sort of undirect, gradual. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Who's that foreigner? Oh, oh, Cedric. Yeah. Look at him. Turn a lantern just like Diogenes is doing. <laughs> Plum disgusting. Yeah. Of course it is. Mine out here they come. Yeah. Yeah, a wonderful world, Dodgeny. Wonderful world, my friend. Wonderful world. Well, I see your printing press has got here, Dodgeny. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, the press. The mighty, vibrant voice of honesty. Now I shall be able to continue my work. To send my golden words into darkened corners. To send them rushing, gushing forth in a mad, triumphant torrent until the whole world is... Do you know what? No, what? I don't believe your front door is wide enough for the printing press to go through. No, the printing press is just too wide for the door. Hmm. I was going to suggest, Dodge, and you just have that truck drive around to the back and unload the press right direct into the feed room. Ah. There's a big door back there. Ah, excellent thought, my friend. A sublime thought fashioned of pure logic. Uh, oh, Cedric. Yes, Paul? A wonderful world, Cedric. Uh, would you, uh... 
My faithful bearer of the lantern, go with the truckmen. Instruct them to unload the press at the rear of the building. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful world. Yes, wonderful world, Cedric. Uh, Dodge, I was just thinking, uh, I imagine you get sort of wore out writing all them pamphlets all day long. No, never, my friend, never. I cherish every moment of my industry. I love every karma I invest in those pamphlets. Every word, every phrase... Every subjunctive clause. Well? No, never shall I wear out at that task until the last drop of my lifeblood has flown away. For you see, my friends, it is my lifeblood that I pour into the wheels and cogs of my printing press. Is that how you get them uh, red letters in your pamphlet? Abner, hush up, for huh? goodness sake. Uh, I was just thinking, Dodge and Ease, it might be a good idea if you had somebody like, say, uh... Well, uh, a helper. Ah, uh, yes, a helper. I had a helper once. He volunteered his services. He assisted in composing the text of the pamphlets. He took his turn at operating the press. Yeah, yeah, that's more sort of what I had in mind. Yes, right and never, never, Mark, you, have I encountered a more despicable man. Huh? Oh, such deceit, such perfidy. His service, my friends, his service was merely a wedge to gain my confidence and seize my wealth. Well, I do. Oh, yes. All virtue had flown from his treacherous frame and left him the epitome of greed and avarice. I wish I could follow. Oh, how could I ever hope for a wonderful world? Wonderful world. With a man like him around. Oh, never. It could never be. Do you like to play marbles? Marbles? Well, I ain't played for a long time, but now I believe I got some old work to play. Hush, let us not speak of marbles. No. Playing marbles for keeps started this man on his wicked wayward path. Oh, no, my friends. Never again shall I trust a man who offers to help me in my glorious pamphlet work. Yeah, well, uh, Lom has already did hey, some... Uh, why did you ask me this, Mr. Edwards? Uh, do you know of someone who wishes to offer such services? No, no, I... Don't know nobody in particular that wants to. I just uh, well, well Lom, you said you set up for last goodness night. sake, Abner, keep quiet. If you know of such a one, my friend, let us not hold back. I need such information for my records. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't know no such a one right now. Why, Lom Ed. Yeah, what are those papers you have in your hand, Mr. Edwards? Uh huh. Oh, a uh, paper. Oh, these. Why yeah, uh, right there, Lom. Yeah. Them you got right Why, there. just uh Grocery orders and bills and let's see what... Here, grocery orders. Is all them grocery orders? I don't just have you been out working a trade this morning I'm trying to get some business for the store here. Yeah, I must have. Well, I do know. <laughs> well, I sit here and looked at that big stack of paper you had there. I thought all the time that you, you said them was pamphlets. Abner, I never written no pamphlets in all my whole life and you know it. Well, uh, what about that stuff you was talking about a while ago that, uh... What was it you said there, Lon? I never said nothing. Yes, you did. That you was telling me that uh, uh, him who is on us will trump. Uh, what was that? Repeat that, Mister Peabody. Please. Abner, Abner. Him who is on us will trump. Oh, what a gem! What a pearl! What clarity and power and simplicity! Yes. Perhaps I've been wrong. Perhaps I can use a helper. Yeah, of course you can, Dodge. Yes. That's what I was going to say. Looks to me like you ought to have somebody help you. Yes, I need a helper, perhaps. Needing new life, a new attitude, a new freshness to cloak my messages. Ah, yes, friends. I'm going to use a helper. Well, good for you. Uh, good for you. Take up the pen and begin your task as soon as you can, Mr. Peabody. Mr. Peabody? Well, wait, yes. Lom is the one that... Uh, hush, I know who is the one. I am a judge of men. <laughs> Come, Mr. Peabody, take up your pen. There is no time to lose. Well, I'll be dead blamed. Uh, what was that, Mr. Edwards? Huh? Oh, uh, wonderful world. Ah, yes, wonderful world. Wonderful world. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I dog Islam, I believe you're right. 
I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lemon Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum thought he could get the inside track in the $10,000 contest Diogenes Smith is conducting by offering his services to Diogenes as an assistant pamphlet writer. However, the plan went amiss, and Diogenes appointed Abner as his helper instead. As we look in on the little community today, we find that Diogenes' printing press has been installed in the feed room of the Jotham Down store, and Abner is hard at work trying to write some pamphlets for those presses while a disgruntled Lum looks on. Listen. Hey, Lum. Uh, come here, Lum. What do you want? Well, come here, come here now, and listen to this idea for a pamphlet and see if it sounds any good to you. No, it don't. I can tell you that before I even hear it. Well, now, listen to it anyway, Lum. Uh, honesty is the best insurance policy. Insurance policy? How'd that insurance get in there? Well, I don't know of no other kind of policies. What, what kind ought it be? Well, it ain't no kind. Just policy, that's all. Huh. But you can't use that because that's an old lettered saying of mine. That's just like stealing. And I don't reckon Dodge and he's going to give that $10,000 prize to a fellow that goes around stealing sins. Well, I never know I was stealing long. I, I, I thought I studied that up myself. You won't tell Dodge and he's I done that, will you? Well, I got to tell the truth, Abner. Honest feller like me, you know. Well, I won't use that anymore. Honest, I won't. I'm honest. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, here. I- I'll just throw it away right now. I'll just tear it up right there and throw it away. See there? See? I ain't going to use it. Uh-huh. Uh, now, now, listen to this one, Lama, and see if it's any better. It ain't. Him who helps his mama is a good boy. Is that it? Yeah. Is that any good? Of course not. You ain't told nobody nothing there. Anybody knows that if you help your mama, you're a good boy. That ain't nothing new. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? How's this one? Him who makes a success out of himself. Well, what's the rest of it? Well, I couldn't think of nothing more. That's as far as I've got with that one. But what do you think I ought to put on the end of it there, Long? Don't ask me. You're the big pamphlet writer around here. Go ahead and finish it yourself. Yeah, but I can't think of nothing, Long. I don't know how to study up no ideas about right living. You ought to have thought of that before you taking the job away from me, Mr. Wise Guy. i never taken this job away from you. You did, Donnie. i never done no such a thing. I was a pinted. Diogenes pinted me. Yeah, but why did he pint you? Just because he heard you giving a saying that I thought up myself, that's why. If you weren't so unhonest, you'd have told him that, too. Well, I tried to tell him, Lon, but... He said he wanted me for his helper. And, well, I weren't going to go against him and get him mad at me. Dog, is I want to win that $10,000. Don't forget that. Go ahead and win it. See if I care. I don't know how you're ever going to do it, though, with them unhonest tactics. That's all I got to say. Well, now, come on now, Lum. You, you just got to help me with these things. I, I can't get them done alone, and I know you got a whole lot of them pamphlets already read up. Listen, Abner, them are my pamphlets. You write your own. You're such a terrible, wonderful writer. Now, let's see you go ahead and do something. Lum, if, if you let me use them pamphlets of yours, I, I'll give you half of the $10,000 when I win it. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. I made you that same proposition yesterday, and you turned me down. Cold. Well, I never said final, did I? Didn't I say something? I'd think it over or something? No, sir. You turned me down. Never said nothing. Said you wanted to be known as the winner and get your picture in the paper and all that. That's just what you said. What's the matter with me, anyway? So, from now on, Mr. Pamphlet Writer, me and you ain't going to have no more propositions. You go your way, and I'll go in the opposite direction. Now, Lum, you just got to help me with these things. Now, I'm supposed to have some pamphlets ready to show Dodge in these today. Well, show him what you got there. Huh? Fact is, I wish you would show them to him. Then maybe Dodge and these would think twice before he goes around and fighting a helper for himself. <laughs> Go on, show them to him. Well, 
I better get some more dead down, I reckon. Let's see. Uh, how, how does this one here sound? Little Pearl helped me write it last night. Uh, roses are red. That's all I need to hear, that one. <laughs> go, go ahead. Roses are red. Violets is blue. Everyone ought to be, ought to be kind and true. And so aren't you, too. That's the worst I ever heard. No ordinary person could turn out something that bad. Little Pearl must be a genius. A genius. <laughs> well, good for Pearl. <laughs> All right, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the matter? Minute. There he comes, there he comes, there he comes dodging these. Doggy, I wished I had some more ideas to show him. Come on now, please, let me, let me just have just a couple of them that you written no, on. No, 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 do your own work. Well, I can't write none long. Wouldn't be honest if I give you some of mine. Oh, it would, done it too. Now, I can't think up no more. Well, don't worry, after today you won't have to. <laughs> Dad, blame it all anyway. By now, here you go. Yeah, wonderful world, Argenie. Oh, yes, wonderful world, my friends. Wonderful world. Wonderful world. And uh, how is my good and faithful helper today? How are you progressing with your mission of missions? Oh. How many golden syllables have you fashioned together for the guidance of the weak and the wayward? Ah. Oh. How much rhetoric have you molded into messages of might? How much logic have you poured into poignant phrases of honesty? How much would you pay for a padlock? A padlock? Yes, huh? yes. Look what I have in this paper sack. Ah, the biggest padlock I could purchase. A dollar sixty-nine cents. Uh, plus the tax. Huh. See how magnificently it works. Insert the key, and then... Tick a lock, tick a lock, tick a lock. The comforting sound of security. Tick a lock. Uh... You feeling all right, Dodge? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, huh. I thought you were going to say wonderful world. No, a wonderful world, Mr. Wonderful Peabody. world. Uh, here, take this padlock and fasten it on the door to my workshop. Then you'll have no interference from me or my printing press in your affairs. Well, wait a minute, Dodge and We don't care if you interference with our affairs. Fact is, we're proud to have you around. No, 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 I insist. Lock the door, board it up. Yes, board it up. But, Dodge and we don't want to lock the door. We trust you. Oh, yes, you trust me, of course. But you see, in the course of my work, I have many visitors. Some good, some bad. Uh, perhaps some are stragglers and strays I must needs bring back to the path of honesty to tread once again in the light of my lantern. It is for your own protection that I demand this done. Well, if you actually only did, why, I reckon we can do it for you. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, let it be done and right away. And now, my faithful helper, let us examine the golden words you have written for me this day. Oh, me? Well, uh... I, I don't know hardly dodge and easy, you see. Go ahead, Abner. Go ahead and show them to him. Yes, yes, time is precious. Read them. Precious is time. Uh, let us see your work, my friend. Well, I feared I ain't done much good. I got one here. It goes, uh, him who helps his mama is a good boy. Him who helps his mama. Oh, yes. Yes, a masterpiece. <laughs> so direct. So simple. Yeah. Uh, therein lies its beauty and uh, its effectiveness. It's uh, fundamental, basically fundamental. Uh, let me have that again, Mr. Peabody. Oh, uh, him who helps his mama is a good boy. Ah, excellent, excellent. Uh, and now you repeat it, Mr. Edwards. Me? Yes, yes, uh, repeat it. Uh, him who helps his mama is a good boy. Magnificent, magnificent, fundamental... Wonderful, uh, isn't it, Mr. Edwards? Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. I don't see how he thinks up them things. Hardly. You know, I believe I shall write a whole pamphlet based on that very theme. In fact, uh, I think I shall repair to my workshop and do it now. And you, my faithful helper, continue your excellent work. Farewell. Oh, but wait, uh, before I take leave of you, I must have a word with you, Mr. Edwards. With me? Yes. I've been observing you. 
your generous, helpful spirit, your lack of envy over your partner's appointment as my helper. Oh, no, I, I weren't envious of him at all. In fact, if I told him anything I could do to help him, I'd... Why, Lord, And so in reward, my friend, I have chosen you for a task, too. Oh, you mean I'm going to write pamphlets? No, 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 not write them. Disseminate them. Oh, I am, huh? I, uh, I shall appoint you as a disseminator of literature. A very important task, my friend. Very important. Well, good for me. Yeah. I shall discuss it further with you later on. But now I must leave. Farewell. Wonderful world. Wonderful world, Wonderful world. world. <laughs> Did you hear that, Mr. Pamphlet Writer? Oh. I'm a disintegrator. Or a disseminator of literature. <laughs> Awfully important job. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it, but... What is one of them uh, disseminators, or what is that, Long? It's, uh, oh, you know what that is, undoubtedly. Huh? Wait a minute, let me get that dictionary we got in the library. Well, don't you know what it is, neither? Yeah, of course I do, but the dictionary explains it in them little bitty words that you can understand. Oh. Uh, Here now, let's see. I reckon that's spelled with a D, sure. Yeah, you, you wouldn't want to trade jobs with me, would you, Long? Of course not. I got just what I want. I ain't uh-huh. that silly. Let's see, D, D, this, I had this. this. It's a little pamphlet, right? December. December. That's it. Disseminate, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. To scatter or spread about. Just spread about. Oh, you, you're supposed to spread the pamphlets around, huh? Uh, take them to all the houses and stuff. Sort of a deliver boy. Well, I'll be dead blamed. Here I am, owner of a big store, justice of the peace, ex-president of the school board, and now I get punted to be a deliver boy. I grant is that varmint ain't going to get away with it. Wait a minute, wait a minute now. Wonderful world, um, wonderful world. Yeah, wonderful world. Is that I believe that's our ring. I had no good lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Abner is no longer the favorite to win the $10,000 which Diogeny Smith is offering to Pine Ridge's most honest citizen. And he is no longer head pamphlet writer for Diogenes. He lost his standing when he turned in some pamphlet ideas which actually belonged to Lum. However, Abner has kept all this from Lum so far. As we look in on the little community today, we find Grandpappy Spears in the library section of the Jotham Down store reading a book, as usual. Uh, Lum is just entering. Listen. Hey, Abner. Oh, hello, Grandpap. Where about is Abner? Abner? Why, he ain't back from lunch yet, Lum. Lunch? Granny, it's three o'clock. How big of a lunch does he eat? Well, he had to wait till I come in so there'd be somebody to watch the store. I'm reading an interesting book here, Lum, How to Entertain Properly. Well, don't start reading it to me. I gotta get out and finish delivering these pamphlets for Dodge and Ease. Just dropped in to tell Abner that the government says we're supposed to set our clock ahead one hour on account of we're on wartime now. Wartime? Yeah, everybody else has set their clocks ahead several days or weeks ago. We're way behind the time. So you tell Abner to fix ours. Uh, li- listen to this, Lum. The maid should wear a simple black frock with dainty collars and cuffs, and a small black apron of linen or organdy. Uh, I can see I better fix the clock myself. Many hostesses, however, prefer costumes which harmonize with the color scheme of the dining room. Well, I never knowed that before. Did you know that, Lom? Uh-huh. There's the clock speaks. Now, don't bother to tell Abner to do it, Grandpap. I'll, I'll be back directly as soon as I get rid of these pamphlets. In the... If the first course is cold, the maid should place it on the table before announcing the meal. Well, she ought to do more than that. If the first course is cold, she ought to heat it up again. Oh, goodness What's the trouble sakes, with them maids? Man, All us trying to slip something up. Huh? You talking to yourself there? Of course not. I'm reading the lump. 
Oh, well, that's funny. He was here just a minute ago. Well, he ain't now. I just seen him going up the street, this sack full of pamphlets there. Yeah, he must have slipped out unbeknownst to me. Yeah, oh, what do he want just now when he's in here? Why, uh, he said something or other about you supposed to turn the clock ahead one hour. Turn the clock ahead? Yeah, you're supposed to do it every day now on account of we're on more time, he said. Government says so, too. Government? I don't get to reckon I better do it then. When the guests are reassembled, the maid steps to the door of the living room and catching the attention of the hostess... Supposed to do it the, every day, said, huh? Yeah. Attention of the hostess, the maid well, says... Well, I better set it ahead of hour for tomorrow, too, then, because I know I'll never recollect to do it in the morning. Madam, dinner is served. Huh? The host oh. with the lady... Guest of honor precedes the other guests to the dining room. Well, there's one R. The hostess and the most important well, there's gentleman. two R's. There, now, that's huh? dead. I dog it, that makes it awful late. I better get over to the post office and get her mail, I reckon, before it closed. It's been in a long time. Uh, will you watch the store a few minutes longer, Grandpap? Some hostesses prefer the Russian style of service. I'll be right and back, Grandpap. All foods are served from the pantry. Get the phone, Grandpa, too. Uh, All right, I'll get it. Yeah. You might be awful crowded serving supper in the pantry. Hello, jot them down, store. Wonderful world. What is it you want? Who? Milford Spears. Just a minute. Or wait a minute. I'm Milford Spears. Who is this? Oh, Charity. Never recognized your voice. He is? Well, when did he get you here? Why, of course, I'll be right home, Charity. Well, as soon as Abner Lum gets back. And it's 6.15 now. Or, oh, wait a minute. I was supposed to set the clock up. I uh, forgot about it. Just a minute, Charity. Hold the receiver. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, all right, Charity. I'll be home directly. Goodbye. A uh, wonderful world. For goodness sakes, Grandpap. Ain't Abner back from lunch yet? Huh. Oh, never heard you come in, Mom. Yeah, Abner's at lunch already, but he's over getting the mail now. Say, Lum, I got to get home. Uncle Frank just drove in from Hannibal, Missouri. Well, good. Good for him. Say hello to Uncle Frank for me. Yeah, well, Lum, drop over to see him. Well, I better scat on over there. I'll see you tomorrow, Lum. And don't lose my place in that book over on the library table. That's a right interesting article. All right, Grandpa. Well, where are you going in such a rash, Grandpa? Over to the place, Abner. Uncle Frank just got in town. Uncle Frank? Where? Yeah, you and your woman drop over after supper and set a while. Well, I'll see you. Maybe we can. Uh, tell him howdy for me. Yeah, I will, Abner. Yeah, so long. So long. Well, howdy, Lum. Thought I seen you heading out of here a while ago with a big sack full of pamphlets to deliver. Well, I just taken them over to Mose Moose Barbershop. Told him to hand them out to everybody. Well, reckon Dodge and Ease is going to like that? Well, I just figured as long as he thinks so much of you, you could tell him you think it's a good idea, too, and be all right with him. Oh. Uh-huh. It'll save me a terrible lot of walking, I know. Yeah, well, I'll tell him for seeing he ain't been around here today. He's working nights now most of the time. Working nights? Yeah, I reckon he can print up them pamphlets out being disturbed on that away. Yeah, but what about that contest he's running? Huh? The ten thousand dollars he's offering for the most honest and kindest person in Pine Ridge. How's he gonna tell who wins it if he's gonna work at night and sleep all day? Well, I don't know. Them five helpers he pinted supposed to watch everybody for him and tell him I reckon. Yeah, I wish I knowed who they was. I bet you I'm wasting a lot of honesty and kindness on a lot of people that ain't doing me a bit of good in this world. Well, the helpers ain't allowed to tell nobody if they're one, so they ain't no use try to find out who they're along. I've got a notion Grandpap might be one of them. Grandpap? Yeah, I know he's acting awful suspicious to me. Hangs around the store here awful lot like he was spying on me and you. Well, he might be. He can't tell. Uh, say, what's this he's telling me about setting the clock up an hour? Oh, that's that new time. Sort of like daylight saving time, except it's called war savings time. Oh. We're supposed to set our clocks up a week or two ago, but I just never hear nothing about it. 
Well, seems like I did read something about it a while back, but never paid no attention to it. Uh, what's it for? Well, the government wants everybody to use more daylight and save on electricity. At least that's what Dick Huddleston was telling me. Save on electricity? Yeah, the government needs all that electricity to run big machines for making guns and tanks and airplanes for our soldiers. Well, how do we save it for them, though? We just don't use so much of it. Yeah, but I mean, how do we get it to them? Can't save it up like tin ball or old aluminum pans and just box it up and ship it to them. Of course not. Well, how do they get it after we've saved it for them? Well, I don't know just how it works, Abner, but that's what they said for us to do, and the thing for us to do is go ahead and not ask no questions. Yeah, sir, that electricity is funny stuff, ain't it? What do you mean, funny? Well, I just never have understood all about it, Mom. I know it comes in town here on them wars and their high lines, they call them, I believe, but where does it come from? From the electric light plant. Yeah, but where do they get it from? They make it right there. Oh, uh, well, how, how they go about making it? I don't know. They got machinery, does it, I reckon. Hmm. Well, how they know when they got it made? I never did see none. Oh, well, they can tell. Did you ever catch a hold of one of them wars? Dogs, do they have to grab hold of them wires to tell where they got it made or not? Of course not. They know what they're doing. You can tell. Hook it up to an electric light bulb. If it burns, they know it's done. Well, I reckon how they ever started that. I bet you the feller that invented that stuff must have got knocked down a hundred times before ever he knowed what he's doing. Benjamin Franklin was the one that invented it. Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, he was flying a kite one day, and some way or other a key run up the kite string. and he Run up? There. Well, he got up there some way. Oh. Anyway, that's how he found out about electricity. Well, I do know. <laughs> flying a kite. Little boy invented, huh? I reckon so. I know of all us here that he was... I grant his wait a minute. I ain't got time to be sitting here explaining nothing to you. We ought to be closed right now. Ought to be closed? Well, sure. Look at that clock. It's after 7 o'clock. After seven. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Now, here, I better call Elizabeth. Just makes her fighting mad for me to be late for supper. Hey. Is this afternoon has sure flew by. Ain't got a thing did today. Hello, Elizabeth. Uh, this is Abner. Well, I'm going to be late for supper. Well, I just can't help it. I never noticed what time it was till just now. Well, I'm leaving here right now. Won't be ready for two hours. For goodness sake. Well, what in the world have you been doing? It's after seven o'clock right now. Of course it is. Yes, sir, it is. Well, now, you better get out there in the kitchen and get started, then. I can't sit around all night and wait for you to get a few vittles ready. Tell her about it, Abner. <laughs> well, now, don't start making excuses. You ought to keep them clocks right around there. If I can't depend on you to get my meals ready on time, I'll go somewhere else. That's telling her. Well, all right. If that's the way you feel about it, I'll just eat down at Luke Spears' restaurant then. All right. Goodbye. Bad blame trifling woman. Ain't got a thing to do except just tend to the housework and look after the stock, do the milk and chop the wood, and just as cause it's her day to do the awning, she can't get my supper ready on time. Now. <laughs>